The story that has unfolded over the last two days is an extraordinary one on a scale that I, 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 I couldn't imagine. This is, a, this is a species that is iconic. It's a keystone species that is symbolic of so much more than just a, a fish in a river. This is, this is a creature that represents the problems in the world today. We spend our lives telling stories and, you know, I think this story is a, is a good one, yeah. it's a real one, and it's full of hope and it's got all the ingredients for a very life-affirming story. Yeah, and I think there is hope, and as long as there's hope, we keep working to save this species. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a, a big learning curve for me because, you know, worrying about salmon disappearing just isn't enough. It's no good going on Twitter and going, salmon are disappearing, sad emoji face. So the reason why we're up here this time around is because we want to discover much more about this beloved fish and not just from the end of a rod, but we want to have a look at it, a more 360 degree approach of, of the salmon and, and what it needs and, and why it's struggling so much. So we're, we're going to meet a lot of experts, a lot of very experienced people who have given their life to try and save this wonderful species. And we want to learn and share with you our findings so that we can all become more aware of what we can do to help save this wonderful species before it's too late. <laughs> no pressure at all. That's wonderful. Really is a it's, a, it's a joyous collective thing to celebrate, but it goes beyond that, doesn't it? It's a symbol that this river is well. It's a symbol that this valley is well. And it's a symbol of nice the hope fish, fresh that fish. We, can, we can share and spread Beautiful. about what we what we can, uh, what all these rivers and valleys can potentially be like yeah, if we act now. So it's a very symbolic moment when you catch and release fish successfully. <laughs> Dara, where are you, mate? It belongs to that man there. That's a big fish. That's a belter. You know, I want to walk away from, after this journey of discovery and be much better educated um, on what it is that the salmon, the problems the salmon face and what we can do now to solve them. And there's so many views on what the problem is, but if you actually have evidence through study and research and they come up with a really black and white, not yeah. argument, but something you can't argue against, then surely with that you can do something about it. So the Missing Salmon Alliance has brought together the, the leading NGO, salmon conservation NGOs uh, in the UK. And it's really to combine our resources. It's not to form a new organisation, but really to bring together the skill sets that we all have. And we're all different. You know, whether strengths in research, there's others have strengths in advocacy or communications. And we need to take combine those strengths so that we can do the best for the salmon. And, and one of the many things that you're doing is, uh, is the um, East Coast or the Murray Firth smelt tagging project, which I think feeds into the Likely Suspects framework, yeah. doesn't so it? It's really that, it's, it's part and parcel of the Likely Suspects framework. And it's really to find out uh, as our smolts go to sea, um, as they're migrating down the rivers, how are they faring? You know, and following them for the, about the first 100 kilometres out to sea. Mm. And we've taken seven rivers in the northeast of Scotland in the Murray Firth, and that's about 20% of the UK's salmon resource flows Huge. out of this single bay, yeah. and it just gets out there. Really important, really important. Bay. Yeah, to really understand. And that's what you need with this. You need, you need numbers. And what we found in the first year, in 2019, was about half of the fish on average went missing in fresh water. 50% went missing? 50%. I mean, like you were saying before when we were talking, you're saying you, in, this, in, in this world that we're involved in, you can't move for opinions. And there's so many opinions of why, why they're going missing. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, I'm in Northumberland, they're always saying it's the seals. There's thousands of seals just at the mouth of the tine waiting to batter those smolts. Oh, it's actually the, the brown trout. So when you catch, catch a brown trout, Robson, knock it on the head. And it's the cormorants, it's the goosanders, it's, it's the pike, it's everything. We don't have a shortage of opinions. I mean, uh, if you ask 
five people, what are the problems with Sam? And you're going to get 10 opinions. Yeah. So what the likely suspect's very much trying to do is act a bit like a casualty department. It's trying to triage. Which one stopped breathing? Because that's the one you need to deal with now. Yeah. Otherwise, it's game over. Yeah. Or the, what's the one with the splinter in its finger? Yeah. And so you can perhaps put that further down um, the list. And it's really to find out what those problems are and then deal with them. So they, the current spins the wheel and then so, they just so the, fall in. The smolts are drifting passively, floating with the current, and then they come into this big wheel here and they can swim in, but because of these blades, they can't get back out again. And then they come all the way through into this catch box here. Oh, actually, and hopefully there's lots of fish in it. I'll move this out of the way. You lift it over. If we sort of swap sides, if you go onto there. Hey, Robson. There you go. Oh, wow. Look at that! That's a good catch. Look at that! Whoa! I'll flip that out for you. What is your take on it? Is there one main culprit for smolt in a, in a river system, so especially here? I think it's important, it's important to think about with predation is there's a lot of human impacts that make it worse. So that's really what we're concentrating on here is if you've got a... Um, if you have a weir in the river, it slows these smolts down and so they become more prone to predation. So what we're really trying to do is give them a free passage on the way down and then the predation levels drop. So um, that, th th this is the thing to look at. It's not just predation alone. Predation might be part of the problem, but it's made worse by man's impact on the rivers as well. And when we're talking about percentages making it to the ocean, yeah. what are we talking about in a river system like this? The, the, how many smolts are going to make it to the ocean to be able to feed? So we got, we got a first view of that, that last year, last that, sorry, in 2019 when we first did this tracking study. And actually of the 100 fish that we tagged and released here, only nine made it to the sea. So that's a 91% mortality, which is huge, which is a, you know, a, there's obviously real issues. So, uh, so yeah, so what we're trying to do is, a, is figure out where those pinch, we call them pinch points, figure out where those pinch points are and then look at the appropriate management action to address that. So, I don't know if you want to, do you want, do you want to, to weigh it and to measure him? So if we just, both two hands and what we'll do is we put them on the board here. Do you want imperial or metric? Metric. Okay, he's 17 centimeters. Smolt. And then we put him on here. Sure. And we get the weight. Oh, he's coming, he's coming around to quick. hopefully be quick. It's fine, so... And just, leave, just leave him in there, he'll, 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 come, he'll come round. He'll come round on his own. So, when you tag them, yeah. you do all this bit first. It's basically the same process, you anaesthetise it, you weigh it, you measure it, you, just to make sure it's the right size for the tagging project. Yeah, and you put it back in the recovery so we, bucket. We put it in recovery bucket, we leave it in there for up to 15 minutes, just to make sure it's, it's well, and all the ones we've done come around very very quickly within like two or three minutes and then we transfer them from that into one of these baskets and we leave them in the river for another 45 minutes just to make sure that they're um, good and healthy and then after that they, we let them go and um, we try and let them go with a number of other fish as well so they're in a shoal when they go right there they go who knows in two or three years time they could come back as double figure springers Jim hopefully what an amazing job Chris is doing. Isn't it? What an amazing job everyone's doing. Yeah. What a great story. So in 2019, the original project was looking at where the fish went missing. They wanted to track where they were migrating down the rivers, how fast they got there. Um, and then when they went to, out to sea, they wanted to see which direction they swam in. The belief at the time, but what is still true, is you know, fish are leaving going into the sea and only about 5% are coming back. So they thought most of the losses were happening at sea. But what they found in 2019, looking at seven rivers around the Moray Firth, they found out that on average about 50% of the fish were actually not making it to sea to start with, which was a huge surprise for people. Yeah. Can they, I just ask, how do you find that out? How, 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 do, how do you know that 50%? Yeah. yeah, I know, but how does that information, how do you get receive that information? Well, we have these arrays, these uh, acoustic receivers that are placed down the rivers and then out to the sea. We had a uh, big marine arrays which go right across the Moray Firth. They went over at Dornach and they went over between Spaby and Brora. And then we had another one, uh, about 120 kilometres for some fish of where they started from um, out of Fraserborough and each of those records a ping from the fish's tag when they go past and the whole project 
uh, there was about 800 fish tagged and that was about 15 million pings. Wow. And That's it, 15 million pings. 15 million pings and then you get the statos um, at Glasgow, analyse that data. And what are you hoping to achieve with the tracking project? So this year, because we realised that so many losses were happening within the rivers, we wanted to, first of all, to check that the same thing happened again. It wasn't just a blip in 2019. But we also increased the resolution of the receivers in the rivers because we wanted to see within the rivers where the fish are going missing in more detail. And then we can try and figure out why. Yeah, I mean, I've been fishing so many times and, and every story you tend to hear over the years is, is incredibly pessimistic. But meeting yourself and Chris yeah. and all the others who are taking care of this so amazing species. Yeah, so much hope. It's a really optimistic message. Well, the team have been amazing, not just AST, but like I say, Glasgow University and all the fisheries trusts that we've been working with right around the coast of Scotland have been so just enthusiastic Everyone about the whole project. Know. Yeah. yeah. So, it. uh -huh. it's the, the so it's, it's been a fantastic project to work on and everybody is really looking forward to finding out what the results are this year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, watch Stay this space. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the well, work you're you, doing. Anna. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi John. Hi Jim. How are you? Good, thanks. Good, nice good. Good to see you. See you. The loy. We're on the loy here, yeah. Wow. So, uh, this is uh, one of the main spawning tributaries of the Lochie. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a nice pristine upland river, isn't it? And you're heavily involved in the uh, in the West Coast smalt tagging project. Tell me a bit more about that. It sounds really exciting. This tracking project will give us a piece of crucial information that we have not had. Many of us on the ground have slightly been uh, acting blind in a way. Is we don't know. We know a lot about salmon. We know a lot about salmon in this river we're standing in front of. As soon as it gets out there, we have very, very little knowledge of it. There's some good work. I mean, AST have been involved in some good work up in the Northeast Atlantic of the feeding grounds. Yeah. But you've got this bit in between is when, how do they get there? Right. And we've got all these marine developments happening, but we don't actually know the paths of the migrating salmon smolts. And if we can work out the paths of those fish, so the young fish going to the feeding grounds, then we can maybe look at protecting those migratory paths when it comes to things like marine developments, fish farms, tidal power, whatever. Oh, okay. You see, so this, you know, before we've been looking at applications for fish farms, for example. Yeah. And, you know, we've been slight, it's slight guesswork. So John, why is it so important that this is, uh, this becomes a collaborative process and there's such a sense of urgency to it? But, yeah, you're right. There really is a sense of urgency to this. I mean, the Atlantic salmon is in really perilous decline throughout its whole range. Uh, but if you take this area on work that we've done, if you go back to the 1960s, for example, 35% of salmon that went to sea came back as spawning adult salmon. Now we reckon that could be about 2%. It's a, it's a huge collapse. I mean, there is a massive pressure on Atlantic salmon from all sorts of factors. But if we don't do something, it's perfectly possible that in 10, 20 years even, this species could have gone. Gone completely from, you know, places where it really was thriving not very long ago. So we, we have to act, we really do. Well, as I live and breathe. Jess Rogers, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very, very well. So I've just come from the East Coast yes. and they were using a, a rotary screw trap to, yes. to catch the smolts. That's not a rotary screw trap. Well, no. it's, it's, it's a net formation. What, 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 what do we call this? Uh, so this is a fike net. A it's fike um, net. slightly different. Mm -hmm. It's a series of chambers, essentially, and it's like a funnel so the fish will swim into the funnel and the, as they come down they get trapped they can't get back out right and then we just collect all the fish in the bottom of, of the which net, there are quite which, a few yes this looks quite promising oh there's a few in there isn't there the tracking project on the west coast it's it's a vast program we're talking about a huge area what are the logistics involved? I mean, how do you actually do it? What are the nuts okay. and bolts? So we have 10 rivers involved, which we're going to ta acoustically tag salmon smolts, and then we release them to continue on their migration out to sea. 
Um, prior to that, we have deployed loads of listening stations, which will listen out for that transmitter, which will ping at a set rate. And we've deployed them out in the minch between Sky and you. So they're actually in, in the, the sea, sea, underwater. Underwater. Excuse my ignorance. Are no, these being fine. taken out in boats and just sunk to the yep, bottom so of the ocean? Yeah, so we went out in boats and sunk them down to the bottom wow. of the ocean. Incredible. Um, so we've got, I think, 200 receivers out at sea. Wow. Um, which will give us an idea of their migration route that they're taking. So the main array is being between Sky and Lewis, but we've also got receivers around Mull, Dura, off the butt of Lewis and um, West Sutherland. So we are covering a huge area um, to try and work out where the smolts are going. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask. It's just a layman's question. Why is it important to understand the migratory habits of smolts? There's so much development happening in our oceans now that we, by understanding where these precious smolts are going that's key to knowing where you can then put developments mm -hmm. so if we can work out where these smolts are migrating the exact route then we can say okay this is our migration route it should be left clear let the salmon smolts run and you can build elsewhere it's just a wonderful life-affirming story coming across these extraordinary people and in a way the work they're doing reminds me of the, of the salmon's journey. There's something working in parallel here. This is kind of subtext to this whole kind of experience. There's some qualities that the salmon has and some characteristics, but there's, there's two that stand out. They have incredible energy and they have incredible determination. And the people I've come across have ex extraordinary amounts of energy, putting their time and their effort into this species not only hoping that it will survive, but thrive as well. And you know, it is, it is gonna take time and it's not gonna be easy, but when is anything worthwhile ever been easy? You know, and they say hope is, a, hope is a passion for the possible. And I think that really resonates here with the work that the AST are doing and the Missing Salmon Alliance are doing, because without hope, there's no point in doing any of it. And, and without hope, the, the salmon has no chance uh, of survival. So as long as we all have hope, then I think there's every chance the next generation can enjoy this fish as much as the ones before us have. I truly believe that if you take care of a river like this, you take care of an ocean, and you take care of the creatures inside it, like the beautiful wild Atlantic salmon, it'll take care of you here and here. I truly believe it.